This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Good night, my Real News Media TV family. Welcome back to the channel for another news update for December 13, 2022. And in the news tonight, Carpenter shot and killed in St. Catherine. The St. Catherine North Police are investigating the circumstances surrounding the murder of a carpenter in the division on Tuesday morning. The police have identified the deceased as a Rishorn Stewart, 25, of Rockford, St. Andrew. Residents reportedly heard explosions about 6.30 a.m. along Friendship Road, Fraser's content to St. Catherine. The police were summoned and upon their arrival, checks revealed that Stewart was shot in the head. No motive has been established in the murder of Stewart. Manchester man accused of cutting spouse's throat during dispute. A man has been charged with a wounding with intent after a domestic dispute with his spouse in Downs District, Manchester, on Tuesday, November 29. Charged is 29-year-old Shannon Smith. Reports are that about 6.45 a.m., Smith and the complainant were at home when a dispute developed. During the melee, Smith allegedly used a knife to cut the complainant on her shoulder and also on the throat. American fined 30,000 Jamaican dollars for armor found in bag. An American man was fined Jamaican $30,000 or 30 days in jail in the Western Regional Gun Court on Tuesday after being held with ammunition at the Sanctuary International Airport in Montego Bay, St. James. Reports are that about 1.56 p.m. on Monday, 27-year-old Auden Caton, an electrical line man of Mount Holly, North Carolina in the United States, was going through the security checkpoint at the airport when his knapsack was scanned and oddities detected. The police were alerted and the bag was searched and the two 9mm cartridges were found. Caton was arrested and subsequently charged with illegal possession of ammunition. Vibes cartel juror found guilty of perverting the course of justice. Livingston Kane, the juror in the Vibes cartel murder trial, who offered the juror foreman $500,000 to get a not guilty verdict in the 2014 case, was today found guilty of perverting the course of justice. Kane's bail was revoked for sentencing on March 2 next year, following the verdict in the Kingston and the St. Andrew Parish Court. Parish Judge Maxine Ellis found Kane guilty on one count of perverting the course of justice, but not guilty on three other counts. One count was also withdrawn by the Crown. The Crown led evidence that Kane perverted the course of justice on March 13 by offering the jury foreman the money to influence other jurors to agree to a not guilty verdict. Prosecutors had alleged that one day before the verdict in Cartel's trial, Kane met with the jury foreman in the Supreme Court Library and told her he realized that she had some influence on other members of the panel before making the offer. They further alleged that he approached two other jurors and tried to convince them to find the entertainer not guilty. Kane allegedly told a female juror that he would take care of her as long as the Sewemiase. He allegedly tried to persuade her to return a not guilty verdict noting that the accused men were promising entertainers and should be released. He is also alleged to have approached a male juror twice. In one instance, he reportedly told him, these guys are prominent entertainers, so we can't send them a jail. And in the second instance, he allegedly said, we have to acquit these men. These are prominent entertainers and young men with a bright future. Kane was charged with three counts of perverting the course of justice based on the allegations surrounding the two jurors but the judge found that the prosecution had not proven its case on those counts. In the meantime, King's counsel Valerie Nita Robertson, who is representing Kane, has indicated that she will be appealing his conviction. Attorney at law Kimberly Whitaker is also representing Kane. Cartel, whose real name is Adija Palmer, Sean Storm, given name Sean Campbell, Kahira Jones, and Andre St. John, were convicted for the August 2011 killing of Clive Lizard Williams at a house in Havendale, St. Andrew, and were all sentenced to life in prison in April 2014. Cartel was ordered to serve 35 years in prison before becoming eligible for parole, 
while the others were ordered to serve 25 years before parole considerations. Man stabbed to death in Spanish town, girlfriend in police custody. A woman is now in police custody following a domestic dispute in which a knife was allegedly used to kill her partner in Spanish town St. Catherine Tuesday morning. The deceased has been identified as Tarsha Samuda of Carlets Road in the parish. It has been reported that about 5.30 a.m., the suspect and the Samuda were at home along Carlets Road when a disagreement developed between them. A knife was reportedly brought into play and during a physical tussle, Samuda was stabbed. He subsequently died from the injuries he received. The suspect later turned herself into the Spanish Town Police. Brown's all family grief stricken after guards are killed at the China Harbor Engineering Company site. Sharon Heslop Royal struggled to hold back tears on Monday as she looked at her wedding photos taken two decades ago, hours after learning that her husband was one of two security guards killed at the China Harbor Engineering Company site in St. Andrew Sunday night. He was a loving man, the grieving widow said as relatives and their friends gathered at her Browns Hall St. Catherine home to console her. We have been married for 20 years, but we have been together for 40 years, so right now it's like I can't manage without him, she said. Lincoln Royal and the 22-year-old colleague Brandon Tristan Small of Horizon Park St. Catherine were reportedly shot dead at an industrial complex at Ferry near the St. Catherine St. Andrew border along Mandela Highway. A third colleague escaped unhurt. According to police reports, about 11 p.m., heavily armed men traveling in a gray motor car entered the compound through the front gate and held up the guard at the security post. They then went further on the compound and opened gunfire hitting small. The assailants then escaped in the motor car in which they had arrived. On Monday morning, the body of one of the guards was reportedly found in the trunk of a motor car, while the other was seen in bushes on the property with gunshot wounds. The police said the third guard, whose radio and the security vest were found on Monday amid a frantic search for him, was eventually located physically unhurt and was being questioned. The police added that the third guard, who reportedly said he fled the area during the attack, was not considered a suspect. He is okay. There was no harm to him that we know physical harm. I don't want to go into his account, but he is well and he is now being interviewed by the police to give his side of the story, Deputy Superintendent Coleridge Minto, the operations officer for the St. Andrew South Police Division, said in a news interview on Monday. Royals' widow told the news that her husband, who would work at nights at the China Harbor Engineering Company compound before taking up duties along the highway during the daytime, left home about 5 p.m. on Saturday for work and was to return home on Wednesday. The couple's son, Romario Royal, was also grief-stricken. When I heard about it, my heart jumped. I am still in disbelief that somebody really murdered my father. I'll know me heart a bleed, he said. He was a great father. I don't know how my mother is going to manage without him, as he was the person who brings happiness and togetherness to the home. Marmblet Murray said the death of her oldest brother was shocking. I was looking for him to leave us from natural cause. I'll know me still a process the sadness. Me weak, she said. Residents of Browns Hall, who visited the family to share in their grief, recalled that the selfless royal, who they affectionately called Dog Rice and the Crucial, was a lover of animals. I lived with the family for many years. He was strict, but a very loving person, Nadine Brown told the news. The major investigation division is probing the incident. Kingston man charged with murder and illegal possession of firearm. A run of almost two years eluding the law has come to an end for 38-year-old Dennis Mondale following his arrest and the charge for murder by detectives attached to the counterterrorism and organized crime investigations branch. Mondale, otherwise called Jin Singh of Spanish Town Road Kingston 13, was arrested on a warrant during an operation in St. Catherine on Friday, December 2. He was subsequently interviewed and later charged with a murder and illegal possession of firearm and ammunition. His court date is being arranged. According to police reports, about 2.20 p.m. on Christmas Day in 2020, 21-year-old Romain Atkinson was assisting a neighbor with dinner at Tewari Crescent Kingston 13 when Mundell and another man approached and opened gunfire, 
hitting Atkinson multiple times to the head and upper body. Mondell escaped and was on the run until the time of his capture. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.